The second round of the NBA playoffs are moving right along. One team has already punched their ticket to the conference finals. Another series will see a game seven. And on Friday night, there's a chance for two other teams to force a game seven. There's a lot to break down in these playoffs. So let's talk about it with the great host and producer for Sirius XM Radio. That would be David Shepard, who joins me now. David, are you enjoying these playoffs still as much as I am? They've been crazy. Dexter, always great to be with you. And and listen, I'm having a heart attack every night, figuratively, not literally, of oh, course. Good. But that is a that that's a great sign that I am enjoying these NBA playoffs. I don't know if Anthony Davis and James Harden are enjoying these playoffs right about mm. now, but I certainly am. I'm glad you are, and yes, that the heart attack is not literal. We do not want that at all <laughs> whatsoever. All yeah. right, Dave, let's start with the pair of game sixes on Friday. Okay. Warriors, they can force a game seven with a win over the Lakers in LA, and the Knicks, they can force a game seven with a win over the Heat in Miami. Which of those two road teams do you trust more to win a game six? Well, the obvious answer is obviously going to be the Golden State Warriors. You have the experience. You have the NBA IQ in terms of closeout games and forcing a game seven in Steph Curry. The key to that series is going to be Draymond Green, of course. Now, when the Warriors and Draymond, when he puts up 20 points for them, they are 30 three and 10 in his career when that takes place. When Draymond lets it fly, when Draymond is aggressive, good things tend to happen. Obviously, they had that game four virtually locked up until Steph Curry decided to go all game seven, 2016 of the NBA Finals and turnovers galore tended to happen. Now, with the Knicks, they did everything and then some just to force this to a game six. Obviously, we know the 38 performance in the 48 minutes, the nine rebounds, seven assist performance from Jalen Brunson. Julius Randle and R.J. Barrett combined for 50 points on over 50% shooting. So the Knicks' big three played extraordinary. The Heat big three, not so much. And the Knicks barely escaped just to force a game six. Obviously, the Warriors ran away with game five. So it just goes to show you, if you were a Warriors fan, you were a lot more comfortable going into enemy territory than you are as a Knickerbockers fan. Unfortunately, New York ain't nothing. Go New York, go New York about it. The Knicks are going to fall in six, while the Warriors are going to extend this series to at least seven games. Oh, man, you just disappointed a whole bunch of Knicks fans there with that Next, I'm just being honest. I, listen, it's your, it's your take, it's your truth, and nope, not mad at that at all. <laughs> now, the Celtics, okay, the Celtics, they forced a game seven with a huge game six win in Philadelphia on Thursday night. Who do you like to win Game 7 on Sunday in Boston? Oh, this is so tough because what Jason Tatum am I getting? Am I getting the guy that started Game 6 going 1 of 15 or am I getting the guy that outscored the 76ers by himself 12 to 3 in the final 4 minutes and 15 seconds? Am I getting the Jason Tatum that is going to go, you know, step back, make Tyrese Maxey fall out of his sneaker, you know, step back 3 and the guy that also in right between the eyes of Joel Embiid twice, knocked down that three-point shot. I believe James Harden has a lot of baggage and had a, has a lot of demons when it comes to his postseason resume and legacy. So I think Harden has won two games this series by himself. I believe there is going to be a third game that Harden is going to win. Remember, the pressure's on the Celtics. They got to win in Boston. I know Jalen Brown was at the podium hyping up the crowd, calling them out. Not a good idea if you are Jalen Brown, by the way. But I, I digress. Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, here's the real sad fact about this Celtics team since 2021 in the postseason at home. They are 10-10. and 10. That is not a very confident home team. And so if I had to pick, I'm going to go with the regular season MVP, even though it should have been Nikola Jokic. I'm going to go with Joel Embiid, and I'm going to go with James Harden, to come through the way he did in game one and game four, respectively. Wow. Going with James Harden to come through in the playoffs. Not too many people going with that, but he might be due. He might be due, so we shall see. Lastly, Dave, the Nuggets, they are now in the West Finals as they demolish the Suns to bounce Phoenix from the playoffs. How impressed have you been with Denver through this postseason run, and are they the team to beat in the West? The answer is... Uh, undoubtedly, and I don't anything I'm pronouncing that word right, but it's uh, undoubtedly the Nuggets are the team to beat in the Western Conference. Obviously, it took Devin Booker averaging 42 points per game on 79% shooting in games three and games four just to barely escape the Nuggets by the skin of their teeth. And we saw what happened 
when Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray and KCP, a.k.a. Contavious Caldwell-Pope, and, of course, Michael Porter Jr. making $30 million a year, finally living up to that in that Game 6. They are a deep, loaded roster. And, Dex, look, here's the thing. You followed basketball for a long time. You understand the history of big men in this league. You can stop Giannis if you build a wall. You can stop Joel Embiid if you run him back and forth all over the court, especially with him being injury prone and dealing with the severity of that knee right now. There is no nullifying. There is no impeding Nikola Jokic. He can beat you in about 15 to 20 ways on any given night. It's why three of the last four contests, he's averaged a 30 point triple double. This guy, we are talking about the greatest center of his generation. He plays with a motor every single night, which is saying something. I hope Anthony Davis is somehow watching this Dexter Henry and taking notes. That is rare when it comes to an NBA big man. You look at what Nikola Jokic is doing, 35 points per game, 13 rebounds per game, 10 assists per game. There is not a better player on planet Earth right now than Nikola Jokic, and he never gets too high, and he never gets too low. And the Nuggets are following his MVP-like lead. And Mike Malone, you saw them in celebration mode. No, it did not exist after beating and dethroning the Phoenix Suns and advancing to the Western Conference because they don't have NBA Finals in mind. They have an NBA championship in mind. And for the first time in franchise history, Dexter Henry, and you heard it here first on your show, the Nuggets are not only going to have this season be the first time they've ever finished as a number one seed in the Western Conference, but they are going to be hoisting the Larry O'Brien Trophy in about three weeks' time. And I look forward to seeing a big smile on your face when you realize I called this before anybody else. Wow. Predicting the Nuggets to win it all already. All Damn right. right. There you go. You got it from David Shepard. So some, somebody get Fat Lever on the phone. <laughs> look, you said it with your chest, so it is what it is. We got you. That is David Shepard, the great producer and host for Sirius XM NBA Radio. Catch him on there. David, always good talking some playoffs hoops with you. Enjoy that game seven on Sunday. Enjoy the game sixes tonight, and we'll talk soon. Dexter, always a pleasure to be on with you, man. Have a great rest of your week, sir. Thank you.